crappy pasta reading. In the spirit and in tribute to one of my favorite com critics of all time, I'm going to be doing this crappy pasta in a Mr. Plunkett voice. Let's begin, shall we? This crappy pasta is called Myra the Killer. Myra is seventeen. Myra is a seventeen-year-old girl who was bullied, beaten, and hurt now for eight years. She isn't like all the other girls in the Red Oak Ridge High School. She listens to rock, not pop. She obsesses with creepy pasta, not boys. On October 31st, that is when her whole life changed. She was walking through the forest at 10 p.m. Myra hadn't gone home. She walked and heard footsteps behind her. She turned around to see two men in white coats. They both tackled Myra and she blacked out. Myra woke up strapped to a bed with needles in her arms. Help, she screamed. She realized that the needles were connecting to a bag full of pink liquid. One of those, those men had walked in and Myra was terrified. The man took the needle from Myra's arm. He then spoke in a deep voice. You will feel better in no time. <clears throat> he then walked out. Myra's eyes grew heavy and she set them close. She let them close so she that she fell asleep, sorry. I'm not very good at reading things when I had too many drinks. When she woke up she felt weird, hungry, not for food, but not for food for screams. Like she wanted to kill. Myra looked down at her hands and saw that she weren't, they weren't her hands anymore. They were nine-inch claws. She felt the heat rise in her eyes, and she broke from the straps that held her down to the bed. Both of the men came rushing in the room. They see Myra's eyes are red. They both look at her in terror. She walks up to the man that took the needle out of her and she pushes her claws in through his chest. When Myra pulls her hand out, she opens her claws and his beating heart was in her palm. She ate the heart as his lifeless body slams onto the ground. The other man stood there shivering in his clothes. Myra stabs him in the stomach and listens to his scream. She laughs insanely and kills him. She walks out of the room and searches for the exit. She looks at the mirror and sees a girl with sharp teeth, red eyes, nine-inch claws, and ripped clothes. She gasps as she sees her eyes change to a shade of purple. She left the building and started walking through the woods. Hold on, give me a second. I need to scroll down. Uh, where was I? Myra walked and walked. About a half, uh, ha about a half hour of walking, she felt as if someone was watching her. She turned and no one was there. When she looked forward, she saw Jeff the killer. She felt her eyes glow a different color, pink as if she was blushing. Jeff analyzed her and left, then left. Now, Je now Myra roams the woods looking for Jeff. If you run into her and you aren't Jeff, I advise you to run. That's the end of this fucking piece of shit story. Now, it's credited to Myra, and I'm gonna give you some criticism, Myra. I'm sure that you're just an impressionable young girl going through your hormones or whatever the fuck women go through. But I'm going to advise you this. The next time you decide to touch a keyboard, a pen or pencil or paper of any kind, I recommend you take the time to sit back and reflect on your life and realize that you 
should be doing more productive things with your time, like working in a toll booth. So this is Vince Twelve signing out or something.